Greetings, friends. The new briefing is dedicated to the propaganda of the aggressor state. We begin with the statements of the deputy chairman of the Security Council of Russia, Medvedev, who once again decided to blackmail the world with a nuclear war. Medvedev wrote an article in the Izvestia newspaper, in which he directly stated that Russia, they say, is ready to resort to the use of nuclear weapons. I quote from the Russian agency TASS. Dmitry Medvedev stated in the article from Izvestia, a threat to the existence of Russia would raise questions about the existence of all human civilization. We don't need the world without Russia, said Medvedev. It is clear what the purpose of this article was. It was written for such accents, because blackmail and intimidation with a nuclear threat is part of the global informational and psychological special operation of the aggressor state around the world. They are trying to stop support for Ukraine by playing this card of a seemingly inevitable nuclear war. And now Medvedev is simply playing alone with this very narrative. It is clear that there is no nuclear threat, because Russia Russia will never succeed in using even tactical nuclear weapons. Otherwise, the question of the future existence of this state as such will arise. Therefore, state propagandists in high positions are moving in order to once again cast doubt on their further actions in the parts of the Western establishment, which supports the countries involved in them. The only recommendation is simply not to pay attention to the statements of the failed politician. Meanwhile, it is clear that on the territory of the aggressor state, Ukraine's desire to deoccupy Crimea again causes concern to official and unofficial propagandists. They throw in the thesis that Crimea is supposedly Russia. In particular, the following statement was made by Putin's spokesperson Peskov, who is quoted by the Russian state news agency. The return of Crimea to Ukraine is impossible. The peninsula is an indomitable part of Russia, said Peskov, who is quoted by Solovyov, a state Russian propagandist. It is clear that Peskov's statements have only one goal, to stop Ukraine's efforts to deoccupy Crimea, which was is and will remain Ukrainian territory and which will be freed from the occupying forces. Likewise, in an attempt to play on these sentiments, Russian propagandists cite the alleged statement of the US National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan that they in America do not consider Crimea as a territory of Ukraine. Of course, this is also not true. The official position of America, the official doctrine of the USA in relation to Crimea is Ukraine. And all other statements which they interpret at their own discretion are designed to serve the sole purpose of causing rejection of the idea of the occupation of Crimea among our allies, which of course will not be possible. The briefing of the official spokesman of the Ministry of Defense of Russia remains a mouthpiece of lies. In his briefing for Monday, he gives, for example, another false information. Russian troops destroyed the ammunition depot of the 72nd Mechanized Brigade in the Artyomovsk region of the Donetsk People's Republic. Such a short sentence and so many false statements. Firstly, there is no Donetsk People's Republic. This is the territory of Ukraine. Secondly, the city of Artyomovsk does not exist either. On the map of Ukraine, there is the city of Bakhmut, which carries out heroic resistance to the next actions of the aggressor. Thirdly, no formations of the 72nd Brigade remained there, because the 72nd Brigade defends Vuhodar, Vuhodar in Ukrainian. And we wish the Russian propagandists to improve their knowledge of Ukrainian geography, at least a little, so as not to look ridiculously weak in their propagandistic statements. Another lie is the state statement of the leader of the mercenaries of Wagner, Prigozhin, about what they allegedly found. I quote, Psychotropic drugs were found in liquidated Ukrainian militias, and the Ukrainian armed forces used chemical weapons against us. Both the first and second statements are lies. The Ukrainian armed forces do not use any chemical weapons. And secondly, it is precisely the Russian mercenaries themselves who actively use psychotropic drugs in order to go on the attack under open fire and die in a war that is absolutely unnecessary for them. That is, the typical approach of Russian propaganda is that what they themselves commit, they attribute to Ukraine. In order to promote their propaganda narratives, Russia is looking for speakers abroad. These are usually marginal European politicians of the past. Such, for example, is one of the French former deputies, which is again used by propagandists in order to make the thrown-ins they need. I quote, according to the Russian state agency RIA Novosti, there is an action in Paris for the countries withdrawal from NATO and the cessation of arms supplies to Ukraine, organized by the leader of the French Patriot movement, Florian Philippe. What is the movement of Florian Philippe, which gathered several dozen people on the streets of France? This is a party that has absolutely no results in recent elections. For example, they won 0.51% for the French Parliament in the 2022 elections and 0.65% for the European Parliament. That is, an unknown political 
force is acting out activities on the cameras of Russian propagandists in order to imitate, as it were, protests against the support of Ukraine by the French authorities. Let me remind you, for example, that Russian propagandists once again acted similarly in relation to Ukraine. Yes, I remember that I personally saw representatives of the Medvedchuk Movement Party and the Medvedchuk Party gathering several activists in front of the parliament who allegedly protested against Ukraine's accession to the Euro-Atlantic structures. This was filmed by Russian television cameras and presented as a kind of protest against the European integration movements of Ukraine. Another example of propaganda is Solovyov's Telegram channel. Here they quote the so-called founder of the online edition of Omerta, the Frenchman Regi Soysomier, who apparently claims, I absolutely do not want the French youth to die for Ukraine. This status is absolutely absurd, because French youth does not die for Ukraine. After all, Ukraine never became a member of NATO, and accordingly the guarantee of collective security does not apply to Ukraine, which provoked Putin to this aggression. Secondly, in order for the French youth not to die, it is necessary to support Ukraine, so that it restrains the aggressor. And who is the French propagandist? It turns out that the troops of the aggressor state received him at positions on the territory of Ukraine in Svatovo Kremina, where he worked out the informational narratives needed by Russian propaganda. Of course, this once again proves that you should not believe the Russian propaganda, as well as their henchmen from foreign so-called publications. It is worth trusting official publications that have a reputation. Trusting the Teleson of Ukraine, the official authorities of Ukraine, military and political leadership. Stay safe.